हेलो एंड वेलकम टू बाइजूस एग्जाम प्रेप आई ए एस आई वेलकम यू आर टूडे सेशन ऑफ द बिग न्यूज एंड द बिग न्यूज टू टूडे इज एट इसरो हैज नाउ लॉन्च सक्सेसफुली द एन वी एस वन सेटेलाइट इन द नाविक सिस्टम एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो नाविक इज इंडियाज आंसर टू द अमेरिकन जी पी एस दिस इज आर वेरी ओन सेटेलाइट नेविगेशन सिस्टम द एन वी एस वन इज अ सेकेंड जनरेशन सेटेलाइट दैट हैज नाउ will be becoming a part of the navic system it will make navic even better even more accurate and will take isro's name to even bigger places in this session of the big news we'll be discussing the significance of navic the nvs1 satellite and how the launch of the nvs1 satellite is a big big achievement for isro but before we do that a quick reminder as all of you know we are running amiga scholarship scheme that gives you a discount of up to 60% on our online classroom and offline classroom courses all that you have to do is click on the link given in the pinned comment section and you will be taken to that page now as i said the big news is that isro has successfully launched the nvs1 navic satellite however there is one other part of the news that many of us actually ignored that part is that it was launched using the gslv now as you all know there are different types of launch vehicles employed by isro there is pslv that is polar satellite launch vehicle and then there is gslv that is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicles the gslv technology is much much harder to conquer and this is again a big achievement by isro especially considering the fact that the last launch of gslv in august 2021 was not a successful launch the last launch of gslv was a failure so for isro to come back from that failure and be successful in launching such an important satellite is an extremely heartwarming news for the entire country this satellite weighs about 2232 kg and it has been launched as i said the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle or the gslv now as you know the pslv is considered as a workhorse of isro PSLV is the one that is usually preferred by ISRO for most of its launches. The US, the I mean the ISRO has actually been able to ensure that the PSLV launches are always successful. They have always been able to carry even the most complex launches using the PSLV. But the advantage that GSLV has over PSLV is that it allows you to actually send much have heavier satellites and thus. it allows you to have much more payload it allows you to have many more other instruments attached to the satellite using the gslv this satellite would have a life of about 12 years this is longer than the usual life span of about 10 years that we used to have in the first generation satellites as i said in the navic with the nvs1 we are now starting to send second generation that means higher order or more advanced satellites that will be second generation the first generation one only had a 10 year life span as i said this is important because the gslv launch the last time we did it in august 2021 was a failure and this is now a success the last time the launch failed mainly because of insufficient pressure in the liquid hydrogen tank in the cryogenic upper stage now cryogenic stage in itself is not an easy thing to conquer but isro has been able to do that which also speaks volumes about the capability that isro has this is usually the main comparison between the pslv and gslv as i said earlier gslv is capable of sending much heavier loads as you can see the lift off mass of pslv 320 tons for gslv over 400 tons thus it allows you to send much heavier payloads many more instruments to carry on research to much longer distances as compared to the pslv also pslv is a four stage launch vehicle four stage means it starts with the solid fuel then liquid then solid and then liquid gslv on the other hand is a three stage vehicle starting with the solid fuel then liquid and the third stage is the cryogenic stage which is the most difficult to conquer which isro has been able to do this time around this is again a comparative table from the side of isro itself mainly talking about how the capacity of gslv is much much higher and that is why it's a more complex technology to handle now let's bring our attention back to what navic is navic as i said earlier is a satellite navigation system just like you use google maps on your phone google maps work because they get data from the satellites usually around the world 
the one navigation system that most countries follow is the GPS, the Global Positioning System, but that is owned by the US. So every other country would want their own system so that they don't have to be dependent on the US. So India started with NAVIC or IRNSS. This is Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System developed by ISRO and its commercial wing Anthrix. It has eight satellites in total. Currently, seven of them are active. The eighth one was also sent very, very, very recently. Three of these would be in the geostationary orbit, while five of these would be in the geosynchronous orbit. Now, as I said, it's working is very similar to the GPS. The one big difference would be GPS gives you global coverage. So it doesn't matter which part of the world you are in, you will be able to use the GPS. You go to Japan, you go to Australia, the same Google map application will work because it's based on GPS. However, India's NAVIC or IRNSS is not capable of giving you global coverage because again, for that, you need many, many more satellites. IRNSS or NAVIC is focused on India and 1500 kilometers from India. That is why India's NAVIC is a regional system, not a global system. Please do remember this. We are not a global navigation system. We are a regional navigation system because it is in our region. As I said, the objective is to cover the entire country and up to 1500 kilometers from India's boundary. Just like the GPS, the NAVIC would also have two types of services. Standard positioning service. This would be available freely to people. So you can also use it in your mobile phones. While there will be restricted service as well. Restricted service usually is much, much more accurate, gives you much more accurate data and location. This is usually used by the military. Even with the GPS, it is only the American military that can use the restricted version of the GPS, while the one that is open for everyone is the standard version of the GPS. It is in position to give us an accuracy of more than 20 meter within India, which will be the primary area where it will be focusing. Also, if you look at other nations in the world that have been working on their own system, as I said, American GPS is the most famous. It has 32 satellites, compare that to India's eight satellites. Russia also has something called the GLONASS. It gives global coverage with 26 satellites. European Union has something called Galileo. It became operation 20. 16, it has about 30 satellites to cover the entire world. China also has its own Beidou. It has a total of 35 satellites. It provides regional coverage of Asia Pacific region and it will also go global. Japan also has its own system called QZSS or COSI Zenith satellite system. This satellite system has a total of seven, total of four satellites. Seven are planned after that as well. And then India, as I said, has a total of eight satellites to give coverage within India and 1500 kilometers from the country. This brings us to the end of today's session of the big news. This is everything that you needed to know about NAVIC, about ISRO's plans to upgrade it in the form of second generation satellites. NVS-1 is just the beginning. We'll have other satellites going up there, replacing the older satellites so that we can have much, much more accurate data. Also, this NVS-1 satellite is the first one to carry Indian-made atomic clock. Indian-made atomic clock would give a much, much more accurate information and the coordinates back home to understand all this location-based data. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not done so. Till now, have a good day ahead. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.